Hello, it's Mrs. Glasson. How are you doing? Well, I hope. And in today's tutorial, I'm hoping to clarify rather than to obfuscate the meanings of some wonderful words beginning with O. Are you ready? Wonderful words beginning with O. Let's go. And let's start with this wonderful word obfuscate or to make unclear. So that's why I said I wanted to clarify the meanings of these words, not to obfuscate them. Now this word is one that my students know, all of my students know this, because I use it in my marking. So for example, and by way of explanation, were I to write the following on your work, Spag obfuscates meaning or grammar obfuscates meaning. That's never very good. What it means is that you've made so many spelling, punctuation and grammar errors that I can't actually understand what you're trying to say. Similarly with the grammar. So grammar obfuscates meaning. That means that you need to work on your grammar for sure. And some of you might think, but you use such a difficult word. You use such a difficult word, your students won't know what that means. But no, that is not the case. I have taught them or I have introduced to them obfuscates. And then by using it as part of my vernacular and writing it on their work, then obviously my students are naturally assimilating and acquiring the meaning of that word. And of course, that's the way to teach vocabulary by introducing it and defining it and contextualizing it and enabling situations in which it can be assimilated, natural situations in which it can be assimilated into my students' vernacular. So therefore my students are learning how to make their writing better and they're also learning some fantastic vocabulary, a double whammy, win-win. So when you write or when you speak, you should be aiming to clarify what you mean, not to obfuscate it. And by way of further explanation and exemplification, Obscure is a synonym for obfuscate, so let's see if that works in those contexts as well, shall we? So, to showcase your English, you should be aiming to clarify and not obscure your meaning. And there we are, those students still need to work on their spag. Um, the spag obscures meaning and that other student still needs to work on her grammar. Her grammar obscures meaning. And let's just pop in the antonym clarifies. Spag clarifies meaning, grammar clarifies meaning. Well done. And that reminds me of something that one of my favourite writers, yes, I know I have so many favourite authors, George Orwell, something that he wrote actually in a very extended um, essay entitled Why I Write. He said good prose should be transparent like a window pane. Prose. All of my students, I think that's lesson one, uh, all of my students know what prose means, okay? So very basic um, English students, you need to know what prose is. Um, so in a very basic way to explain it, any writing that isn't poetry, but please do look that up. So prose is written in sentences and paragraphs. Poetry is written in lines and stanzas or verses or tercets, or my students will know, quatrains. Um, so, transparent like a window pane. Your prose should not obfuscate your meaning. 
And here we have two fantastic reading recommendations. Of course, all of my students have read Animal Farm. The first piece of uh, creative writing, the persuasive piece that I do, obviously we look to George Orwell to teach us. He gives us a masterclass in persuasive writing in both of those novels, but certainly through Old Major's speech. I've used that at Tiffin Girls, I used that at Greenshaw, at Lady Margaret, at Sutton Grammar to teach persuasive writing. So uh, my foundation course students and revision course students, when I see them in our Zoom, I love to meet them. They are, uh, Animal Farm is definitely one of the books that I recommend on my reading list. So don't forget, I recommend reading materials and methods because don't forget, I'm a walking exemplification of how my methods work. Um, and 1984, my goodness, I studied that for A-level. And students, parents, teachers, it completely changed my life. So it's a seminal novel. Um, if there's anybody out there who hasn't read Animal Farm in 1984, my goodness, what are you doing with your lives? Read them. So 1984, um, and I think most people write it like this now. There we are. Although had I written that in my A-level literature class at Lady Margaret, I probably would have been sent out of the class. And so on a very different note, obstinate meaning stubborn and a wonderful synonym for obstinate meaning stubborn, obdurate. So you will remember how obdurate Ebenezer Scrooge was. He was not going to Fred's, he was not going to contribute to charity and he was not going to participate in Christmas. Bar humbug. But that was at the start of the novella. So let's end now with some proactive learning and hopefully some reinforcement of vocabulary that I have taught you already. Obligatory. Do you remember that word? It's in wonderful words beginning with M. And two synonyms for obligatory. One begins with M and ends in Y. And the other begins in C and ends in Y. And if you haven't seen wonderful words beginning with M, watch it now. And if you have seen it and you can't remember, then go back and watch and make sure you're, write, you're writing these wonderful words down. I'd hate to think of them going to waste and just being scattered out there into the ether. So the answers to this, number six and seven, they are in wonderful words beginning with M. Off you go, go and find them. And if you did get them right, then well done. That's fantastic. And let's end with a little reminder. If you're enjoying these tutorials, then please press the pink subscribe button. Can you see it down below? And make sure you subscribe. Feel free to show your support by liking my videos or making a comment. I will definitely respond. And also, if you want to find out more about my courses, and you don't have to be an 11 plus student, I think most people get this by now, you just need to be an English student who wants to improve. Um, and so do go to www.mrsglasson.com and look at what else is on offer. And please do follow me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And that way you will get the full benefit of my experience and my expertise and my enthusiasm. So I hope you have enjoyed today's tutorial and I hope that by following my tutorials and writing down those wonderful words, you are elevating your Lexis, making your diction more dexterous and making your English exemplary. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you again with wonderful words beginning with P.